What's up guys? Uh, well, today's video is one that I've promised for a while. Apologies for it being delayed. I've had a lot going on this week, but we are going to talk today about the brand new McLaren MCL33 update for their car that they brought to Barcelona. Specifically, the front part, the nose, the wing, uh, that cape, and the way it all interacts with the rest of the car. So, let's have a look. This is perhaps the most striking element. This is the thing that makes it stand out, look different to everybody else's car. It's not something that we've necessarily seen before, but it's very rare, you know, on a Formula One car, particularly in terms of aerodynamics. And aerodynamics are the bits of the Formula One car that we can generally see. Certainly the bits of the top surfaces, the bodywork, that kind of thing, the nose cones, the wings. We can see all of those. So there's no real secrets when it comes to aerodynamics. Once they've been designed and manufactured and on a car, they're out there in the open for everyone to see. So it's very rare that we see something that's brand new, groundbreaking and unique. In many ways, this new McLaren uh, front nose cone is unique. However, it actually incorporates a number of ideas that we have seen before. It's just put them together in a perhaps a unique way. There are a couple of unique elements, which we'll get to in a minute. The front end though, the front end of the nose, with this three triple nostril, I've heard it being called, triple nostril affair, is not in itself unique. We've seen this kind of element on the Red Bull, haven't we, for a couple of seasons now, this opened nose tip. Uh, the reason for that is to allow or to minimise the obstruction uh, as the airflow hits the front of that nose cone. Um, it just opens it up, allows the air to pass through it, and it's channeled then into a specific area underneath the cape, which we'll get onto in a moment. The other two uh, nostrils at the uh, either side here do very much the same kind of thing and channel the whole lot of this fast flowing, uh, fast flowing air, free stream air that it's hitting at the front of the car into these key areas that we'll have a look at. So unique in that the three have been put together in this way, not unique ideas. Much the same or very similar to the Red Bull idea and this similar kind of thing you might recognise from Sauber and Force India in terms of the nostrils. So that's the way it looks when you look, step back and look at the nose cone in itself. The three nostrils, as I say, at the front there. Uh, these bits here, which are perhaps unique, we haven't really seen these on a Formula One car before. People are calling them credit card slots. Um, I don't really know what the term terminology should be for that. They are kind of veins. Um, they are, I don't know what you call them. Um, but they are slots running the full length of this nose cone. Um, the purpose of that is to direct and control some of the airflow that's spilling off the top of this nose and coming through the sides, hitting the sides of this nose, just to keep it under control. Whereas if they weren't there, that would all spill off and be uh, fairly loose and uncontrolled airflow. So by narrowing the nose, which is what they've done, you can see it narrowing in very tightly here. Uh, you can see what they're doing here is giving a much narrower section for the nose, a little bit like the Mercedes, which also has this narrowing effect from the, the top of the chassis here. Uh, last year's McLaren, or the, sorry, this uh, earlier this year, the original McLaren nose uh, was essentially followed the same width uh, of the chassis top all the way down, like some of the other teams do. Um, but now, like the Mercedes, they've gone for this much narrower nose cone. Uh, but to take up the full allowed width within the regulations, they have added these two veins, slots, winglets, credit card slots <laughs> down the side. And the idea, as I say, is to control all the airflow that hits the top of this and would spill off, just to give it some kind of guide veins to direct it to the area that they really want it to go, which we're gonna have a look at now. Now, the key to this whole concept is this piece here. This is a, a cape, we've, we've come to know them as. Uh, the Mercedes has a cape, uh, not quite as pronounced, not quite as big as this. Uh, the McLaren concept for this new nose centers around this large cape idea. If you view this nose from the underside, what you'll see is this cape has a very big flat section, something like that wide, that runs all the way across the underside of the nose cone. And everything else, around this new concept is designed to maximize the performance of that cape. Um, what that cape is largely there for, it's a big control element to direct an awful lot of this airflow, this free stream airflow that's hitting the front of the car 
towards the really key crucial elements that sit underneath the nose cone and underneath the chassis that direct then the airflow off to the really crucial parts of the car like the barge boards and on towards the rear of the floor and the diffuser. These big long slots that I talked about that are gathering up the airflow that's spilling, very fast airflow spilling off the top of this nose cone and hitting the side, these are there to control its flow, direct its flow down towards this big flat section of the cape. And once it hits this, of course, that takes it on, as I said, to these crucial areas on the back here. The nostrils on the front of the nose cone are directing airflow to the underside of that cape. Again, when it then attaches to the, the surface, the face of that cape follows the line, follows the contour and sends it off again to the underside of the floor and to the underside of the chassis where it's carefully controlled towards the rear of the car. So all of these elements are all about maximising this cape. This is a really good picture because it shows exactly what I'm talking about in terms of what the cape and the nostrils are doing in conjunction with the rest of the car. You can see these turning vanes here, again new on the McLaren, are all designed perfectly to line up with the trailing edge of this cape. And that's very deliberate because the airflow is being passed from this onto these areas, as I said. These areas here are then, as I said, controlling it very carefully, spinning up vortices, sending it off through the barge boards back here, controlling it, taking the, uh, the uh, distorted wake, the turbulent wake from these front tyres, spinning that out, protecting the um, side pod airflow intakes from that turbulent wake. All of this is a really crucial area. The inboard tips of these front wing elements are all again designed to create spinning vortices that will pass through all of these elements, channeling the airflow in a very direct and controlled manner. The front wing itself these days is very much about airflow control, much more so than it is about absolute downforce. There's plenty of downforce that's generated by the front end of a Formula One car. All of these complications, all these complicated bits here are all much more about controlling the airflow. In 2019, as we now know with the new regulations coming in, much of this will all be simplified. A wider front wing, but with much less, much fewer elements. The, the uh, brake ducts, many of the cars have very kind of detailed and um, intricate little winglets sprouting off all of those. Again, just in there to design to control the airflow, particularly around the front tyres, all going to be simplified for 2019. It really puts an awful lot of strain on a Formula One team this year because all of the development that's going on in every Formula One team up and down the grid right now and of course throughout the course of 2019, at some point there's going to have to be a, a real balance about how much more do you develop these kind of technologies and how much resource do you put onto the 2019 development which makes much of this obsolete. This of course is the car that McLaren wanted to have back in Australia. This was their 2018 car that was so delayed we only actually saw the results of this, this area of development in Barcelona. As I said, much of this concept is about airflow control, particularly working this central section, which then, as I said, spins off to feed the rest of the car. Um, there are elements of this, though, that are not just about control. The fact that these uh, front nostrils here are slightly upturned and in conjunction with where they sit over the front wing, there will be some downforce generated. The pressure differential between the underside and the top side of this cape could also generate some downforce. But by far the biggest idea behind this concept is about controlling that airflow as I said. Some nice ideas, uh, some taken from other teams as we said before, but nice to see them packaged in a way that makes the car look unique and stand out from the crowd. Quite rare we get that in this day and age. I like the look of it, I think there's some really nice ideas on it. We will have to wait and see just how much of a performance leap it might give the team. Barcelona of course reasonably inconclusive because everybody takes updates along with them. They say it worked quite well. Fernando Alonso was pretty positive about the way the car felt, but we'll only really know once we've had three or four races with this being uh, developed further, honed, um, and, and the, by the time the team were able to get the most out of it, we'll only really then know whether we can count this as a successful update. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you like it, hit like. Uh, please share it around and subscribe if you haven't already. Big thanks to Sutton Images for the pictures, great shots, uh, nice close-ups, detailed shots as they always do. Thanks to them, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.